So welcome. Today we'll be discussing labor and delivery. Normal labor and delivery. Mantuni and so. By way of definition, labor is said to be the onset of regular, painful contractions with progressive dilatation of the cervix and effacement of the cervix, accompanied by a descent of the presenting part. Ending, of course, with the delivery of the fetus, the placenta, and the membranes. For us to call something a normal label, there are some expectations. It should be a spontaneous expulsion. The baby comes out on its own without needing to suction the baby out, without needing a forceps delivery, it comes out naturally on its own. Then it must have of a single birth. The twins, triplets, those are not normal labor, even if they do eventually deliver successfully. Then it should be a mature fetus that is. 37 completed weeks, which is 38 weeks, and up to 42 weeks, so between 38 and 42 weeks. Then it must prevent vertex. A bridge presentation is not a normal delivery. Then the birth should be through the birth canal. The cesarean section is not a normal level. It's not a normal delivery. It's a surgical and operative delivery must be within a reasonable time, not less than three hours, not more than 18 hours. Less than three hours will be precipitate labor. More than 18 hours will be prolonged labor. And it must happen without complications to the mother or the fetus. This all must be in place for you to say this patient had a normal labor and delivery. So what are the factors that would influence the progress of There are three P's of labor. It's called the passenger, which is the head of the fetus. That's the point of interest. Then the power, that's the um, contractile force of the uterine muscle, and the passage, which is the maternal pelvis. These three factors will determine the progress of labor successful one will be only unduly prolonged, it will be very brief. And um, a normal gynecoid pelvis, because that's expected normal for anyone who would be said to have a normal pelvic passage, a normal pelvis that would allow for a smooth um, labor and delivery. The brain is slightly over then the sacral promontory is not prominent. The transverse diameter is slightly longer anterior posteriorly. Not this way. Then the side walls, side walls are parallel and they are straight. The ischial spines are not prominent. The sacrosciatic notches are wide. The sacrum has a good curve. You can see here it's curved downwards. Then the pubic arc is wide. Ideally, it should be more than 90 degrees. Then the intertuberous diameter is wide. All of these will facilitate for a wide pelvis that would allow for a smooth passage of the fetal head that would allow for easy. Now as to the passenger, which is the fetal score. This is the fetal score. But there is um, a, a process called molding that allows for ease of passage of the skull. The ability of the fetal head to change its shape so that it adapts itself to the maternal pelvis during the process of labor. Now, this is the a broken lines is the outline of the fetal skull normally. But in the process of molding, you can see some things are beginning to override, almost like it's changing its shape to be able to suit the maternal passage and be able to come out easily. Then now when it comes to the power that would allow 
for a smooth labor and delivery. The power in question now is there's the uterine contraction and there's the additional force. When the uterus is contracted, there's a shortening of the muscle fibers of the uterus. Then there's retraction. It is shorter and it retracts backwards. Then there's increased intrauterine pressure, almost like it squeezes on the baby and would allow it to be pushed out. Now the additional forces, because the mother would also be pushing, and of course there is increased intra-abdominal intra pressure. All of these come together to allow for easy passage of the fetus through the birth canal. Uterine contraction, the frequency is said to be one in every two to three minutes with at least one minute interval. So that would allow for an average of four, four to five contractions in 10 minutes. And the intensity is said to be greater than 50 millimeter mercury. When you have a cardiotogograph, you would always see these graphical readings. These graphical readings let you assess the strength of the contraction. Strong contractions should be greater than 50. If you're having less than that, she's contracting really. It's just that it may not be strong enough to allow for a quick delivery within the shortest, shortest time possible. Then the duration of each contraction is expected to be between 40 to 60 seconds. If you have the perfecting contraction and you have the contraction going on for two minutes, that is not a normal contraction. It could be, a, it could be something induced by an oxytocin. So if a patient is on oxytocin, oxytocin, misoprostol, and the lights, that could be why the contraction is not relaxing because each contraction should come in pulses, contract, then relax, so that blood can flow to the baby, then contract again, then relax. So duration for each contraction is about 40 to 60 seconds. So what are the factors that will initiate the onset of labor? I would not um, explain so much on this, but it's worth knowing these factors. There's the estrogen factors. These are hormonal factors. There's hormonal factors, there's mechanical factors. The hormonal factors will include the estrogen factor, the progesterone withdrawal theory, the prostaglandin theory, the oxytocin theory, then the fetal cortisol theory. Then the mechanical factors will include uterine distension theory and stretch of the lower uterine segment by the presenting part when it is near time. How do you diagnose if a patient is in labor? The symptoms and signs that are expected is onset of painful regular uterine contraction, evidence by contraction of at least one in 10 minutes. Maybe enough for you to say, okay, now she's in latent phase. By the time she's in active phase, you will be expecting at least four in 10 minutes. But if a woman comes to the hospital, has one contraction in 10 minutes, it's painful, painful it is regular, she could very well be in labor if she's time. Then passage of show is evidenced by mucus. Excuse me, please. Passage of show is evidenced by mucus mixed with blood. The rupture of membrane as evidenced by lycor draining, which begins to drain lycor. Which is time. The bar has started. Then progressive shortening and dilatation of the cervix. So what are the stages of labor? There's a first stage. First stage is from the onset of labor till full effacement, that's full thinning out and dilatation of the cervix and it's divided into two. There's the latent phase and this will usually begin with onset of contraction and it will end when the cervix is dilated to 3 cm and effaced. The active phase is beyond this from more than 3 cm dilatation. So what happens during the first stage of labor? During the first stage of labor, you have contractions that is regular, that is increasing in frequency 
and is getting stronger by the moment. For every each review, for each review, it should get stronger. Frequency should increase, should get more regular from the latent phase to the acute phase, active phase. Then aside the contraction, there is cervical dilatation and effacement. Latent phase is we said is the first three cm. Then it's a slow process. It could be up to eight hours in a molliparous woman, a woman who has never had a baby. Then a woman who has had a couple of babies. She, it could be up to three hours in a molliparous woman. Now, active phase is <coughs> the active process of cervical dilatation. The normal rate is expected to dilate one cm every hour. So she comes in at four cm. All things being equal, she's expected to birth that baby six hours later. Since the eventually birth will happen at 10 C. Then of course the <coughs> excuse me. Then of course there is the engagement of the pre presenting part. When he engages in the maternal pelvis, it's not floating. The part that will present for the loop in this case, which is the vatus, gets to engage. And then um, the second stage of labor is it's called the first stage. Second stage is will usually begin with full dilatation and it will end with the delivery of the baby. So when they say woman is fully dilated, she's 10 cm dilated, second stage begins. Then we prepare for delivery and she's told to push, position herself till the baby is delivered. And it has two phases. There's the propulsive phase, there's the expulsive phase. Propulsive phases from the full dilatation until the presenting part has descended to the pelvic floor. When you can palpate the presenting part at the pelvic floor, then expulsive phases, the one that ends with the delivery of the baby, when the baby is eventually out of the birth canal. And the average length of time for a woman who has never had a baby before, which is a premigravida, it could be up to 40 minutes. Why it's important to know this is so that um, you, you are not unduly in hurry, you're not unduly anxious, and the patient is also reassured. This phase could take a while, just be patient, give yourself some time, it will happen. Then multigravida could just be a brief period of about 20 minutes. The third stage of labor will begin after delivery of the baby, and it will end with the delivery of the placenta and the membranes. And it has two phases. There's a separation of the placenta from the uterus. And there's the eventual expulsion of the placenta and the membrane from the uterine cavity. And the duration is about 15 minutes or less if labor was actively managed. So the fourth stage is three to four hours after delivery of the placenta and the membrane. It's like a period of stabilization of the fetus and the mother. Is there anything that needs to be sutured? Maybe she, <clears throat> she had an episiotomy or she had a cut. She's not bleeding, assessed for bleeding. Well, um, the mother is encouraged to begin breastfeeding. It's just the general supportive care and stabilization that follows delivery of the baby in the first three to four hours is said to be the first stage. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful week.